welcome back for another video. We're heading into the business end of the season with three double game weeks in the next four game weeks, so there's lots to think about now. In this one, we're going to run through how my team is lining up this week and try out plans, with two to spend before a wild card in game week 35. Start with a quick review of last game week then. 63 points all out, a red arrow to outside top 100k. It was one of those weeks of a great team on paper, but lots of blanks. Neto with zero, no clean sheets from the Arsenal duo, Van Dijk or Lewis. Lewis was actually a good example of how the early team use doesn't always guarantee success. I really fancied City to keep a clean sheet home to Luton, with potential for lots of goals as well. And they did put five past them, but an 81st minute consolation goal from Barkley wiping the clean sheet. It was a close call between Regulon and Lewis for me, with Regulon putting up a nine pointer. Both Brentford and Man City faced just two shots on target. Massive relief to have Captain Haaland at least, it was a very close call between him and Salah for me. Wasn't considering Palmer in all honesty. Fair play to anyone who did Captain Palmer. 26 points, the biggest score of the season, and it's been over six years since anyone scored higher than that in a single match, which was Salah against Watford back in 2018. I noticed that the top score this week was 167 points, the triple captain Foden, which reverted to Palmer since he didn't play. 167 points, biggest score of the entire season, no words for that one. Solanke with a quality goal just at the right time, right before the double game week, at Muslin Camboala, and slot on a shot bottom corner past Onana. Exactly what you love to see right before a double game week. I got the bench all wrong, with Dubravka keeping a surprise clean sheet against Spurs, despite a backline of Burn, Kraft, Shearer and Murphy. And of course, Gusto's clean sheet on the bench as well, and the 6 0 win over Everton. Let's move on and get into the team for Double Gaming 34 and try out some plans this week. In goal, it's Neto, who's got an away double to Villa and Wolves. If I was on a free here, I'd definitely have another keeper, but it's too much of a luxury transfer to move him on, with more potential points on the table if I buy some outfield players. For a lot of players, it's their final game week in my team this season. Neto is definitely one of those, he'll be replaced by a couple of double gaming 37 keepers next week. One clean sheet across the two games would be a nice parting gift. Onto the defence, which is Saliba, Gabriel and Van Dijk. I wonder whether Arteta could rotate Gabriel for Kivior, given the amount of games he's played, but realistically he can't afford to rotate now. They're out of the Champions League after losing 3-2 on aggregate to Bayern, so we'll focus on the Premier League now and hope that City drop points at some point. It wouldn't surprise me if City win every single remaining game, that's the state of play now, the minimum is to win every game. I've combined the clean sheet odds for those of a double game week to give the percentage chances of each team keeping at least one clean sheet. Arsenal are top with a 66% chance, and then Liverpool with a 56%, and then Everton then Palace. I'm hoping that it pays off for the extra I paid for Van Dijk over Bradley back in game week 29. With Bradley reportedly out for three weeks and he's therefore going to miss the double game week, and had he been fit he would have been a rotation risk with Trent anyway. Trent's emerge as a massive upside differential to consider, but Europa League minutes could dictate the likelihood of Trent, Darwin, Diaz and Jota and their chances of starting both games. Liverpool have got two away games, Fulham first and then the Merseyside derby against Everton. Onto the midfield which is Salah, Saka, Son and Huang. So it's a blank game week for Son, so the plan is to sell him this week and then buy him straight back on the game week 35 wildcard for his double. I'll lose 0.1 mil but it's more than worth it. At this stage of the season, chasing team value is basically irrelevant it's not worth risking early moves in my eyes. We've spent 33 game weeks building our team value. I'd sell them even if it was a 0.5 mil loss as there's so many good double game midfielders on the table this week. Points over value. Salah gets the captaincy. He's not looked his best recently but he's still the best in my opinion. On the double game week 34, any time goal scorer probabilities, he is top given a 67% chance of scoring any time across both games. Darwin isn't second with 64%, but the odds are based on the assumption the player starts both games, which feels much likely in Salah's case. In double game week 25 against Brentford and Luton, he only played the first game, but he got one goal, one assist. Going further back, in double game week 34 last season, he scored 18 points, double game week 25 before that, 11 points. Those of you that played in the 21 22 season will remember his 28 pointer in double game week 26, though it was an easy home double to Norwich and Leeds. Saka's had a concern and drop off in form recently. I think much like last season, he's been overplayed with a lack of quality depth in his position, unlike the left wing. Over the last six game weeks, he's registered 0.79 non-penalty expected goals, which ranks 64th among all players. Even Gabriel's got a better non-penalty XG over that run. Perhaps the vice captaincy is even a bit generous on Saka, could switch to Solanke. With two free transfers, I've got a choice to make this week with Huang. He's just back from injury and he might not start the Arsenal game, so it could be like a 1.3 game week for him rather than double. I could sell him for a better double gaming asset along with selling Sun and then play Haaland. 
where I could sell Haaland and Son with full 11 with a double game week. It's a close call, I'll talk through my current thoughts on the transfer plans in a minute. The front three is Haaland, Solanke and Mateta. Haaland had another quiet game in the Champions League and he was subbed off at 90 minutes before extra time. Pep said that Haaland, Akanji and De Bruyne were all in forced withdrawals. Haaland asked to be taken off and he was unable to continue. Man City and Chelsea are going to play on the weekend before their gimmick 34 fixture midweek, so we won't get a pre-deadline press conference for that fixture. However, we will get one before the FA Cup on Friday, so I'll be paying attention to what's said there. I really like the idea of keeping Haaland as a hedge against the three hitters, who I imagine almost entirely go without him. Over the last six game weeks, Mateta 3.12 non-penalty expected goals ranks fourth in the league after Munoz, Isaac and Johnson. He's got a home double to West Ham and Newcastle. This season West Ham's 61.5 expected goals conceded is third worst after Luton and Sheffield United, and Newcastle's 54.5 xGC is sixth worst. He's only 2.5% owned, I can see him being a really popular free hit pick this week. Good fixtures and good underlying data. I imagine this team will run very close to the team that free hit select, which is encouraging. It's hard to say if I actually would have done any better if I hadn't used the free hit in 29 and saved it for now. It might have even played tricks on me, forcing myself to pick some left field players just to differentiate from my actual team. For example, picking Trent over Van Dijk, which isn't necessarily an upgrade. Incredibly, after 33 game weeks, Solanke is well in the golden boot race of 17 goals. Haaland and Palmer have got 20. Absolutely absurd, by the way, how Palmer's leading the golden boot race with Haaland, albeit lots of penalties there. Solanke is another one who's going to be in almost all the free hit teams this week, away to Villa and then away to Wolves. Aston Villa still about Douglas to Wees, though it didn't seem to make any difference against Arsenal. The bench is Dubravka, Palmer, Lewis and Gusto. So the bench picks itself as single game makers. Despite Palmer's ridiculous form, I'd rather start Haaland against Brighton than Palmer against Arsenal. So two free transfers and there's a lot of ways to go with them. Sun's obviously a sell this week, so the current plan is to sell Sun for Luis Diaz and Palmer for Eze. For this one, I'll need a positive update on Haaland by Pep on Friday, as the plan would be to bench Wang in favour of him. It's also dependent on Liverpool's lineup and minutes in Europa League. If Diaz plays 90, then he may not start both in the double. Another couple of players on my radar are Trent and Elise. If Trent gets limited minutes in Europa League, and he's very tempting with Bradley injured, that there is still the possibility of Gomez playing right back, so he's not nailed. And Elise has been exceptional when he's fit. The problem's been his availability and reliability, which is why he's not been considered much this season. Ordinarily, he'd be a risky transfer with a longer term view, as he could last two games and then pick up an injury again. But in a double game week, it's a one week play and he just needs to last the two games, so I think he's a top pick. So just to walk through what this looks like on Plan FPL, Eze and Diaz gives me 10 players of a double plus Haaland, with Huang first on the bench in case Haaland misses out. Obviously there's a chance that Haaland plays a cameo, which would be the worst scenario. Or if I buy Trent and Eze, it'll be a 4-4-2 with double Liverpool defence and double Arsenal defence, and again starting Haaland. Let me know which one you prefer, and if you think benching Huang for Haaland is a sound strategy. I think assuming that Huang doesn't start the first game, it's very close as it would be Haaland against Brighton, Huang against Bournemouth and possibly 30 to 60 minutes for Huang against Arsenal. Thanks very much for watching, if you enjoyed this video hit subscribe, the wildcard will be active as soon as the deadline passes so you don't want to miss next week's content. See you soon for the next one.